So light differentiation, this isn't something that's covered at all at GCSE, and it's probably something completely new to you. So in the last set of videos, we talked about differentiation, and this is when we go from y, or it could also be called f of x, and we go to dy over dx, or it could also be called f dash of x. And this is differentiation. Integration is just the complete opposite of this. We're going from dy over dx or f dash of x, and we're going to y or f of x. So let's say that we had the function x to the power of n, and we wanted to integrate this function. So how would we do this? Well, we would write this as this symbol here, then x to the power of n, whatever we're integrating, and then dx. So what does this mean? Well, this symbol here just means integrate. And then this here is what we're integrating. So in this case, x to the power of n. And then this here means what we're integrating in terms of. And in this case, we're integrating in terms of x. If this was instead we wanted to integrate t to the power of n, this would instead be dt, as we'd be integrating in terms of t. But we're doing x to the power of n, so therefore we're integrating in terms of x, so we write d of x. And this is equal to, if we integrate x to the power of n with dx, then it is going to be 1 over n plus 1 x to the power of n plus 1. And this makes sense if you think about it, because remember that integration is just the opposite of differentiation. So if you differentiate this, it's going to be 1 over n plus 1, and then it's going to be times this differentiated, so it's going to be n plus 1 x and then n plus 1 minus 1 is going to be n and then these two cancel out so therefore it's just going to be x to the power of n so remember integration is the opposite of differentiation and therefore we can see that when we integrate something it's going to be 1 over n plus 1 x to the power of n plus 1 so let's do an example let's say that we wanted to integrate x to the power of 2. So the way that we would write this is we would do this symbol at the start and then we would do dx on the end. So what this is saying is integrate because we have this symbol at the start and then this function x squared and then dx means in terms of x and this is going to be equal to so in this case, n is equal to 2. So x to the power of 2 integrated is going to be 1 over n plus 1, so 1 over 2 plus 1, so 1 over 3. x to the power of n plus 1, so to the power of 3. So that is x squared integrated. Now, one important thing with integration is something called the constant of integration. So if we differentiate this 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 is going to be 1 over 3 times an x to the power of 3 um, differentiated is 3 x to the power of 2 which is equal to x squared which is obviously what we expect because it's the opposite so 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 is going to be x squared but what if we differentiate 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 plus 6. Well, this is just going to be the same because we do it term by term, so this is also going to be x squared. But when we differentiate a constant, the constant just goes away. So this is also going to be equal to x squared. And this is the case for whatever constant we use, if it's plus 8, minus 2, um, whatever. If we have a constant here, if we differentiate it, it's still going to be x squared. So the question is now, how do we know that this is going to just be 1 over 3 x to the power of 3. How do we know that there's not going to be a constant here when we integrate it? And to do this, when we do an integration, we put plus c on the end. And you should do this for all integrations.
and put a plus C on the end. And this is basically acknowledging that there could be a constant, there could be a number here on the end, but we don't know because, of course, it could just be 1 over 3 x to the power of 3. We're not sure. So whenever you do integrals, put this plus C on the end, and this is basically acknowledging that there could be a constant on the end. So here's some more examples. So here we need to integrate x to the power of 3. So that means that 3 is equal to n. So this is going to be equal to 1 over n plus 1. So it's going to be 1 over 3 plus 1. So 1 over 4x and then to the power of 4 and then plus c. For the second example, it's going to be, so it's x to the power of 3 over 2, so 3 over 2 is equal to n. So 3 over 2 plus 1 is equal to 5 over 2, so it's going to be 1 divided by 5 over 2. And remember, when you divide a fraction, when you do 1 divided by a fraction, it just flips over like that. So it's going to be 2 over 5x to the power of 5 over 2, and then remember the plus c on the end for all integrals. For 3, it's x. So remember, this is actually x to the power of 1. We don't really write it. So n is equal to 1. So therefore, it's going to be 1 over 2 x to the power of 2. And then plus c. For number 4, it's x to the power of minus 5. Now, I'm, I'm really trying not to be patronising when I say this. I make this mistake all the time. That minus 5 plus 1 is equal to minus 4. The amount of time that I'm rushing in an exam and I just kind of say that minus 5 plus 1 is minus 6 and I do it from there. Please remember that for minuses it works um, the opposite way. It's going to be minus 4. So therefore it's going to be 1 over minus 4. So minus 1 over 4 and then x and then it's going to be to the power of minus 4 plus c. So remember for minuses don't make that, um, don't make that mistake. And then for 5 it's t this time, so it's dt, so this is the exact same thing. If you really want to, you can write it um, with the like t as x. If you really want to, it really doesn't matter. But integrate t to the power of 3 dt is going to be, it's just going to be this, just with t written instead. So 1 over 4 t to the power of 4 plus c. So remember the plus C for all of them, you always need to write that. It's a really common mistake, again, when you're rushing exams, forget the plus C. So always just remember it at the end. If we have a coefficient at the front of x to the power of n, it works in the exact same way, in a very similar way that it works in differentiation as well, where we just need to multiply whatever is produced by the integration by that original coefficient. So the integral of ax to the power of n dx is going to be equal to a times and then you just integrate this so it's going to be n plus 1 under 1 x to the power of n plus 1 and then remember the plus c on the end so for example let's say that we needed to integrate 2x to the power of 3 dx this is going to be equal to 2 times and then integrate this so this is going to be 1 over 3 plus 1 which is 4 x to the power of 3 plus 1 which is 4 and then this is going to be equal to 2 times um, 1 over 4 it's going to be a half x to the power of 4 and then remember the plus c on the end as well so here's some examples so for the first one we need to integrate minus 4x to the power of 5 over 4 so this is going to be equal to minus 4 times and then we just integrate this 5 over 4 plus 1 is equal to 9 over 4 so it's going to be 1 divided by 9 over 4 so that will flip the fraction to 4 over 9 and then it's going to be x to the power of 9 over 4 and that's going to be equal to so it's 4 times 4 so it's going to be minus 16 over 9 x to the power of 9 over 4 and then remember the plus c on the end for the second example it's the uh, we need to integrate 5 and remember that this is actually 5x to the power of 0 we just don't write x to the power of 0 because x to the power of 0 is equal to 1 and therefore we can integrate this by doing 5 times and then we integrate x to the power of 0 so n is equal to 0 so it's going to be 1 over 0 plus 1 which is going to be equal to 1 over 1 so we just write that as 1 but we don't really need to write it and then it's x to the power of 0 plus 1 which is 1, but again, we don't really write the 1. So this is just equal to 5x plus c. For the third example, it's 3x to the power of minus 4. So this is going to be 
three times and then we integrate x to the power of minus four so this is going to be so n is equal to minus four so it's going to be one over minus four plus one which is going to be minus one over three again remember minuses work and um, how minuses work when you're doing it quickly and then x to the power of minus three which is equal to the denominator cancels out so it's going to be minus x to the power of minus three plus c and then for the final example it's 3 over 5 x to the power of 5 over 3 which is going to be equal to 3 over 5 times and then it's going to be 5 over 3 plus uh, 1 which is going to be 8 over 3 which we write as 3 over 8 because it's going to be 1 divided by 8 over 3 and then x to the power of 8 over 3 which is going to be equal to 9 over 40 x to the power of of 8 over 3 and then put the plus c on the end so again remember the plus c's at the end as well so if there are multiple terms it works the exact same way as it did in differentiation where we just integrate the terms individually so for the first example as we're integrating the terms individually you could actually technically write this as the integral of x squared d of x plus the integral of 2x cubed d of x but this isn't really necessary so we integrate the terms individually so x squared integrated is going to be 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 and then 2x to the power of 3 integrated is going to be 2 times 1 over 4 x to the power of 4 integrated which is just going to be equal to a half x to the power of 4 so this integrated is going to be 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 plus a half x to the power of 4 and then plus c for the second example we again we integrate the terms individually so the first term is going to be 3 times and then x to the power of minus 3 is going to be minus a half x to the power of minus 2 which is going to be equal to minus 3 over 2 x to the power of minus 2 and then minus 2 x to the power of um, 3 over 2 is going to be minus 2 times and then it's going to be 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2 remember 1 divided by a fraction flips over so it's going to be 2 over 5 x to the power of 5 over 2 which is equal to minus 4 over 5 x to the power of 5 over 2 i really help kind of i find it really helps kind of like laying out like this i think it really helps um do it and this is going to be equal then to minus 3 over 2 x to the power of minus 2 minus 4 over 5 x to the power of 5 over 2 these terms added together and then the plus c on the end and then for the final example this is actually an example specifically mentioned on the spec so we integrate we integrate the terms individually so half x squared is going to be half times 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 because we integrate this individually which is going to be equal to 1 over 6 x to the power of 3 and then this integrated is going to be minus 3 times and then this integrated so minus a half plus 1 is a half so 1 divided by a half flips over so it's going to be 2 and then x to the power of a half and this is going to be equal to minus 6 x to the half so this is going to be equal to 1 over 6 x cubed minus 6 x to the half plus c. So if you get multiple terms, just integrate them individually and therefore that will get you the answer. A lot of the time you might need to do some simplifying first before you can kind of directly integrate it. So here's some examples of this where we have 3 over x squared plus root of x and we need to integrate this. So first we need to put it in its indices form. So this is going to be equal to, so the integral of, and then 3 over x to the power of 2 is equal to 3 x to the power of minus 2 because the minus um, shows it's in the denominator. And then plus root x is going to be x to the half then d of x and then we can integrate this by integrating the terms individually so 3x to the power of minus 2 is going to be 3 times an x to the power of minus 2 integrated so minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 so it's going to be 
minus 1 over 1, so it's just going to be minus 1, but we don't really write the 1, and then x to the power of minus 1, which is equal to minus 3 x to the power of minus 1, and then x to the power of a half is just going to be so um, half plus 1 is 3 over 2, and then 1 divided by 3 over 2 is 2 over 3, and then it's going to be x to the power of 3 over 2. So therefore the integral of this is equal to these ter these two terms added together, 1 over uh, minus 3 x to the power of minus 1 plus 2 over 3 x to the power of 3 over 2 and then put the plus c at the end. Here's another example and this example is actually specifically mentioned on the spec so we need to simplify this first so this is x plus 2 squared over x to the half so first of all let's expand the brackets so this is going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x to the half and then what we can do because we have this lone term in the denominator and these terms in the numerator we can divide each term in the numerator by the denominator i'll write this out in full in order to show it so this is going to be equal to x squared over x to the half plus 4x over x to the half plus 4 over x to the half and this is equal to, so x squared um, divided by x to the power of a half is going to be 2 minus half, so it's x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 4. And then remember this is actually a 1, so it's 1 minus a half, so it's going to be 4x to the half. And then plus 4x to the minus half. So therefore we can write this as the integral of this x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 4x to the power of a half, plus 4x to the power of minus a half dx. And therefore, we can integrate this by integrating all the terms individually. So x to the power of 3 over 2 is going to be, um, so 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2, and then this is therefore going to be 2 over 5, x to the power of 5 over 2. 4x to the half is going to be 4 times and then x to the power of half integrated is going to be uh, so half plus one is three over two so this is going to be two over three x to the power of three over two which is going to be equal to eight over three x to the power of three over two and then this is going to be four times and x to the power of minus a half um, integrated is going to be so a half, uh, minus a half plus one is a half and then one divided by half is two so it's going to be two x to the power of a half which is going to be equal to eight x to the power of a half so therefore this integral is equal to these terms added together two over five x to the power of five over two plus eight over three x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 8x to the power of a half and then of course the plus c on the end. Now I had this diagram at the start showing that integration is the opposite of differentiation. So to get from y to dy over dx you differentiate. So to get from dy over dx to y you integrate. So therefore the integral of dy over dx in terms of dx is just equal to y and then plus c. So for an exam question, they could give you dy over dx and then they want you to find y, which just means that you uh, integrate dy over dx and that will give you y. So therefore, for, to get y here, you just integrate x plus 4 cubed for dx. So that's what dy over dx is. So firstly, we need to expand the brackets. So x plus 4 to the power of 3 is equal to x plus 4, x plus 4, x plus 4. Let's expand the bracket, so this is going to be x plus 4. You could do a binomial expansion, but I think it's a bit quicker to do it this way. x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then this is going to be x times x is x cubed. x times 8x is 8x squared. And then x times 16 is 16x. And then 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times 8x is 32 x and then 4 times 16 is plus 64 then we can simplify this to x cubed plus 4 
plus 12x squared plus 48x plus 64. So therefore this is equal to, and we, this means we're integrating this function here, x cubed plus 12x squared plus 48x plus 64 dx and then again we just integrate each term individually so x to the power of 3 is going to be 1 over 4 x to the power of 4 12x squared is going to be 12 times and then x squared differentiated which is going to be 1 over 3 x to the power of 3 which can be simplified to 4 x cubed 48x is going to be 48 times and then it's going to be a half x squared which is going to be equal to 24 x squared and then 64 is going to just be 64 x so therefore this is equal to 1 over 4 x to the power of 4 plus 4 x cubed plus 24 x squared plus 64 x and then of course plus c now, if they give you dy over dx for a curve, and therefore you can figure out y, and they give you a point on that curve, you can actually figure out the constant of integration. You can actually figure out the plus c part by subbing in this point in order to find out what it is. So first of all, let's find y using the dy over dx. Remember, we need to integrate this. Let's put this into a bit more of an integratable form. So it's going to be 5x to the half over 3 x squared minus 5 which we can simplify to 5 over 3 and that's a half minus 2 is equal to minus uh, is equal to x to the power of minus 3 over 2 minus 5 and then we can integrate this dx and then we do the terms individually so it's going to be first term is going to be 5 over 3 and then this integrated is going to be so minus 3 over 2 plus 1 is going to be minus a half and then 1 divided by minus a half is going to be minus 2 there's x to the minus half and this is equal to minus 10 over 3 x to the power of minus a half and then the minus 5 is just going to be the minus 5x so therefore this is going to be equal to minus 10 over 3 x to the minus half minus 5x and then the plus c on the end so this means that y is equal to minus 10 over 3 x to the power of minus a half minus 5x plus c and now we can sub in this for x and this for y for this point and therefore we can find c so y is equal to minus 19 over 3 and this is equal to minus 10 over 3 1 to the power of minus a half minus 5 1 and then plus c we can simplify this so this will be minus 19 over 3 is equal to and then 1 to the power of minus a half is just 1 so therefore it's minus 10 over 3 minus 5 plus c we can simplify this again to minus 19 over 3 is equal to and this is going to be minus 25 over 3 plus c and then we can move this onto the other side and this gives that if you use your calculator c is equal to 2 so this is the final answer so using this we can find that the constant of integration for this particular example is 2 so everything we've dealt with so far are indefinite integrals like this but we also need to be able to deal with definite integrals like this which is the exact same except we have a number here and we have a number here, I've called them A and B here. So what's this, what's the difference? Well, the integration is the same, but basically now we have an upper bound and a lower bound that we need to sub in. So let's do an example. Let's say that we are integrating F dash of X. So we're gonna do the integration symbol here and it's dx and let's say that the lower bound is a and the upper bound is b well the integral of f dash of x which we talked about before is f of x and then what we do is we put these square brackets around f of x and we move the b and the a onto the right hand side so the b goes here and the a goes here and what this means is that we sub in b first so it's going to be f and we sub in b as x and then we minus what happens when we sub in a so we minus f of a so let's do an example let's say that we want to integrate between 3 and 6 
x squared for dx. So this is going to be equal to, so uh, the integral of x squared is just going to be 1 over 3 x to the power of 3. And then we do these square brackets and we move the numbers onto the other side. So this is going to be 6 and this is going to be 3. And then we sub 6 in as the upper bound and 3 in as the lower bound. So what we do is first of all, we sub in 6 to this. So it's going to be 1 over 3 and then 6 cubed. And then we minus what happens when we sub in 3. So this is going to be minus 1 over 3 3 cubed. And if we put this into a calculator, this gets out a value of 63. So therefore, the integral between 6 and 3 for x squared dx is equal to 63. So just a note, you may have noticed that we don't write uh, plus c here. And for a definite integral, we don't really tend to write plus c, as it will just cancel out when we sub in the numbers. So here's another example. So we need to integrate 3 over 4x minus 3 over 2 from 0 to 8. So first of all, let's do the um, integration. So this is going to be, we do the terms individually. So this is going to be 3 over 4 times, and then x integrated is a half x squared. So this is equal to 3 over 8 x squared, and then minus 3 over 2 is just going to be minus 3 over 2x. So this integral is equal to 3 over 8x squared minus 3 over 2x. And then we do the square brackets. And then we put the 0 here and the 8 here. And then what we do is we sub in the value of 8 into here. And then we minus whatever, uh, whatever the number is when we sub in 0 uh, to here. So first of all, let's do 8. So this is going to be 3 over 8 and then it's going to be 8 squared minus 3 over 2 8 and if you put this into a calculator this is equal to 12 and then we're going to do 0 so this is going to be 3 over 8 0 squared minus 3 over 2 0 and you can see that everything's times by 0 so this is just going to equal 0 so therefore the definite integral is going to be 12 minus 0 which is just equal to 12. Here's another example where we're integrating from 1 to 4. So first of all, let's integrate this and let's simplify it first. So this is going to be equal to x of x minus 2 plus 3x to the minus a half, which is equal to expand the brackets to x squared minus 2x plus 3x. And then it's going to be 1 minus a half. So this is going to be a half. So this is equal to the integral of... 1 to 4 of x squared minus 2x plus 3x to the half dx. And then we can just integrate this. So x squared is going to be 1 over 3x cubed. And then minus 2x is going to be minus 2 times. And then the integral of x is going to be half x squared, which is equal to minus x squared. And then 3x to the power of half is going to be 3 times and then it's going to be half plus one which is three over two and then you flip it because it's divided um, one divided by that to get two over three x to the power of three over two which is equal to two x to the power of three over two so the integral is one over three x to the power of three minus x squared plus two x to the power of three over two and then we do the square brackets and then it's between one and four so we sub in 4 first, so it's going to be 1 over 3, 4 cubed minus 4 squared plus 2, 4 to the power of 3 over 2, which if you put into your calculator is equal to 64 over 3. And then we sub in 1, so this is going to be 1 uh, over 3, 1 cubed minus 1 squared plus 2, 1 to the power of 3 over 2, which is equal to 4 over 3, and therefore we do 64 over 3 and then we minus the 4 over 3 which is when we subbed in 1 and this is equal to 20.
So here's one final example we have to integrate from 2 to 4 for this function here. So we integrate first and we do it term by term. So 3x squared is going to be 3 times and an x squared integrated is 1 over 3, x to the power of 3. Denominator cancels out to just give x to the power of 3. And then x to the minus 2 is going to be equal to, so it's going to be divided by minus 1, which is going to be minus 1 and then x to the power of minus 1. So this is equal to, and then we add the terms together, x to the power of 3 minus minus x to the power of minus 1. Then we do the square brackets and it's from 2 to 4. And then we just sub in the value. So we'll sub in 4 first. So it's going to be 4 cubed minus 4 to the power of minus 1. Which we put into a calculator is equal to 255 over 4. And then when you sub in 2, it's going to be 2 cubed minus 2 to the power of minus 1, which is equal to 15 over 2. So therefore, the answer is going to be what happens when you sub in 4, which is 255 over 4 minus what happens when you sub in 2, which is 15 over 2. So it's going to be minus 15 over 2. And if you put that into a calculator, that's equal to 2, 2, 5 over 4. So that's the final answer. Now, really quick, like this differentiation chapter, your calculator has this really powerful way for you to check the answer. On your calculator, where the d over dx thing was for the differentiation chapter um, calculator thing as well, there is an integration symbol. If you press that, it gives you this blank integration symbol where it gives you an empty bit where you can put in the function, an empty box, and then these two smaller boxes where you can put in the lower and the upper bound. So for this question, for example, if you put in this function, 3x squared plus x to the minus two you can use it you can do this by next to the integration symbol there's an x symbol which can be used to put in the um the x term and then you put in the two and the four as the lower and upper bounds and then you press equals it also gives out the value of 225 over 4. And this is a really powerful way for you to check if you have the right answer, if your calc gives out the same value. Now, just to note, you can only do this to check your answers because it's really good because it can tell you that you've got the answer 100% right. But you can only do it to check because the examiners are aware of this function. So if you just wrote out 225 over 4 in the answer box and just did it using your calculator, they will know that you haven't done any work and you've just plugged it into your calculator. However, it's a really good way to check your answer because you can see if the calculator gives out the same value that you do, and in this case it does. And that's a good way to know, okay, I've got this answer right, and I can move on to the next question. So here's a couple of questions on integration basics. So pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answers in about five seconds. So for question one, we need to integrate this. So let's put it into its indices form to make it easier to integrate. So we can rewrite this as 2x to the power of 4 minus 4, and then it's going to be x to the power of minus a half plus 3, and then dx, and then we can just integrate each term individually. So 2x to the power of 4 is going to be 2 times, and it's going to be the, integrate, the integral of this, which is going to be 1 over 5x to the power of 5, which is equal to 2 over 5 x to the power of 5 minus 4x to the power of a half is going to be minus 4 times and then um, x to the power of a half integrated which is going to be some minus a half plus 1 is a half and then 1 divided by half is 2 so it's going to be 2x to the power of a half which is equal to minus 8x to the power of a half and then plus 3 is just going to be 3 x so therefore this integrated is going to be these terms added together which is 2 over 5 x to the power of 5 minus 8x to the power of a half plus 3x and then remember the plus c at the end. So for part a we're given this integral and we're told this equal to 4 and we have a term k here and we need to show that 3k plus 5 root k minus 12 is equal to 0. So let's evaluate this integral because it will probably give this um it will probably give this equation um, some way through. So let's rewrite this in an easier form. So the integral for 1 and k of, and then it's going to be 5 over 2, and then the root x is on the bottom, so it's going to be x to the power of minus a half, and then plus 3 of dx. And then what we're going to do is integrate this. So we do it term by term. So the first term is going to be 5 over 2, times and then minus a half plus one is a half and then one divided by half is two so it's going to be two x to the power of a half which is equal to five x to 
the half and then 3x is just going to be 3x uh, sorry 3 is just going to be 3x so therefore this is going to equal 5x to the half plus 3x and then we put the square brackets around it and it's going to be 1 and k and then we're going to sub the values of k of k and 1 in so and this is going to equal 4 so let's do k first so this is going to be 5 I'm going to rewrite this as the square root as it's got the square root here so that's a clue that it should probably be in there 5 and then it's going to be root k plus 3 and then it's going to be k so that's what happens when we sub k in and then when we sub 1 in it's going to be 5 1 to the power of a half plus 3 1 and this is going to be equal to, so this is just equal to um, 1 and this is going to be equal to 1. So it's just going to be 5 plus 3, which is equal to 8. So therefore, this thing is going to equal 5 root k plus 3k. And then it's going to be the minus 8 because we're minusing the value when we sub in 1. And this is equal to 4. So this is the equation that we have. So let's move 4 onto the other side. So it's going to become 5 root k plus 3k. And then it's going to be minus 12 is equal to 0. And this is equal to this. So we just write it as 3k plus 5 root k minus 12 is equal to 0 instead. So that's the answer. So for part B, we need to find any values of k such as this equation is true. And because we derived this equation before, therefore we can just solve this equation as a quadratic equation in order to um, get the values of k. There's loads of ways you can solve this. You can use it using your calculator if you want. I'm just going to um, factorise it. So I'm going to say that root k is equal to y so therefore this equation becomes 3y squared plus 5y minus 12 is equal to 0 to make it a bit more of an easier quadratic to work with then we can factorize it one side is going to be 3y the other side is going to be y and with enough, with enough um, deliberation you will eventually be able to see that this is going to be the minus 4 and this is going to be the plus 3 because if you expand this the um, 3y times 3 and the minus 4 times y will give the 5y um, in the middle so therefore y is equal to 4 over 3 and y is equal to minus 3. This is quite um, um, a difficult um, quadratic, so go back to chapter 2 if you can't remember how to solve um, quadratic equations to get this. And therefore, root k is equal to 4 over 3 and minus 3. However, root k cannot be equal to minus 3 because a root number cannot be equal to minus 3, so therefore this is not the case. So therefore, root k is equal only to 4 over 3 so therefore k is going to be equal to and we square this and that's going to be equal to 16 over 9 so k is equal to 16 over 9 and if you sub k into this um, you will um, solve the equation now a really good way you could check this is by using your calculator using the um, integral function putting this equation um, function sorry into um, your calculator and then using 1 and then the value of k that you've got 16 over 9 in order to check your answer and that does also give out a value of 4 so that's a really good way to check that you've got the right answer